Hi, and welcome to episode one of See Maven Knits. I'm Maven Knits from mavenknits.com, and I decided that I wanted to do a vlog because as a knitter, it's pretty tricky to read and knit at the same time. Um, plus, I wasn't super enjoying the writing of the blog, and so I thought if I did a video, then more people would be able to enjoy it, and also it would sort of give this feeling of a little bit of a knitting circle when you don't have a knitting circle. Um, I go to a couple of knitting circles here. I live in Nanaimo, BC, and it's great, but they're only a couple times a week. So here it is. It's Thursday and I have nobody to craft with. So I am going to craft with you. Um, so what, what is, what am I going to do? Why well, don't, it's, I decided that I just want to knit. So I might talk a little bit sometimes, probably a lot, let's face it. Um, but basically I'm going to be knitting. And while I knit, I'll talk, and then sometimes I'll just be quiet, you know, like when you're in an knitting circle and somebody's concentrating on their cables and they're just, they're just quiet, that'll be what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do it all in one take, so uh, there's not gonna be any like of those like classy cuts, cause I just, I don't want to, I don't really, I'm not a production person. I'm just, I just want to knit. So, that's what I'm going to do. And um, I'm going to try not to count out loud, because I know how annoying that is when someone's counting out loud when you're, like, counting. Um, but other than that, we're just going to wing it. So, I have a little glass of water here. Sometimes I'll have, like, tea. You could get some tea and maybe some knitting-friendly cookies or whatever. It'll be fun. Um, yeah. So, I guess I'll start with sharing what I'm knitting and um, where I am. So this is my house with my partner, Jeff, and um, it's my kitchen. He's at work, obviously. No, I just keep him like trapped in a room. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Maybe that'll happen. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of knitting here because there's a really pretty big window, which is providing a lot of light, and um, a table, which is nice. Um, today I'm working on something I've been working on for a while. It's, um, it's called the Stonecutter's Cardigan and it's an Aran weight cable knit cardigan. Um, the instructions are in the round but I've decided to do it in um, pieces because I like the way that the structure works when sweaters are in pieces, you know? Sometimes they get like floppy on the side if they don't have seams. Or at least my last one did, so I'm gonna try this. Um, it's a bit of an experiment because not all of my calculations are like certain when I do them because, um, because yeah, she has calculations for in the round, so we're gonna see what happens. Um, Right now I'm just knitting the armpits and, and up, you know, that sort of thing. Um, what are you knitting? Maybe comment that. That would be fun. We could have like, we could, I wish we could do a live, but then it would be, oh man, it would be so awkward. So, um, what are you knitting? And maybe link to the pattern on Ravelry if it's fun. Take a picture. I like pictures. Um, maybe even take a video of yourself knitting, and that'll be fun. Um, what else? That's about it. I'm at the point where I'm going to measure right now to see how far more I have to knit before, um, before I have to do, like, the neck shoulder shaping thing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that. You just knit and we're, we're good. We're friendly here. It's, it's chill.
Okay, we're all measured up. I've got a little bit more to go. Um, yeah, I feel I feel like you're here. I feel like you're keeping me company. It's really nice. Um, sometimes I just I feel sad when I'm just knitting or sewing alone. I just want I want buddies, you know. I want to like. Have a couple of sewing people going at the same time or like a little circle of knitters. So I think this is a good way to facilitate that. Another thing I do when I knit is I listen to audiobooks. Do you do that? Um, it's pretty fun unless you can't concentrate on two things at once which Sometimes is hard, um, especially when the pattern's weird or lace. Um, but I'll tell you about the book that I'm listening to right now. It is called The Readers of Broken Wheel Recommend. And I don't love it. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a little slow and the, the narrator is not really... Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to insult the narrator because maybe some people really like it, but I just find it a little bit amateur sounding, I guess. Um, if you're an avid audiobook listener, you might have heard Diana Gabaldon's Outlander series. Um, well, that was a big bust. Um, the narrator is Davina Porter and she's amazing and so anyone other than that sometimes I'm just like no this is terrible but anyway it's not terrible it's just it's not as good as I would like it to be so that being said um I do like the premise of the book um basically what happens is there's this woman in Sweden her name's Zara and um she works at a bookstore, and I guess she was had to send some books to a woman in Iowa, uh, in Broken Wheel, in Iowa, um, the U.S., for those of you who don't know the U.S., um, and they ended up becoming pen pals, and talking about books, and writing back and forth for, like, a couple of years, I think, and then, um, the woman decided to invite her to Broken Wheel to come and stay with her for a few months because she, um, Zara uh, lost her job as, as a bookstore clerk. And so she was excited to go and, and she gets on the plane and goes over to the US and then um, she arrives and her pen pal died while she was in transit. And so she gets there, and there's nobody there to meet her, of course. And the town's kind of like super duper small town, so they're all a little bit like, oh, what do we do with this this tourist, they call her. And um, so she gets there eventually, and they kind of welcome her in, and and she stays at her pen pal's house. And I'm saying pen pal because for some reason I can't remember her name. Um, Amy. Amy's her name. So she stays at Amy's house even though Amy's passed away recently. I think I would be, I would be pretty spooked by that, but Zara seems to be okay. Um, and the cool thing is, is that she's been talking with Amy for so long um, through through uh, letters that she knows tons about the town and the people and all the things that have gone on there but the town I don't think really realizes that and so she's there and she's meeting all these people that she's heard about over and over again but doesn't really know what to say because Amy's not there and she knows all these things and so it's sort of like you're listening to her dialogue in her head and that's kind of cute um, and then eventually um, she opens up a little bookstore with all of Amy's books and the readers of Broken Wheel 
become her like clientele and it's super cute it's it's a really cute premise and it's very bookish there's lots of quotes about famous writers and just sweet sweet kind of pictures of of reading and and enjoying books and getting lost in books so if you were the type of person when you were young and you just read to like escape the world this is a good book for you um, which I kind of did as a kid so um, yeah it's it's good in that way uh, I think it would be better to read it with my eyeballs as opposed to listen to it with my ears um, but yeah that's kind of what I've been listening to. Sometimes I listen to podcasts, um, but mostly books. Do you? What are you listening to? What do you watch on TV? Um, what's your knitting circle like? I'd love to know all of these things. It was actually pretty funny. I was telling my partner that I wanted to do this and he was, well, I, at first I told him I was just going to do like a podcast or a video vlog cast um, where I'm just sitting and knitting and it's totally silent. And he was like, that's the best idea ever. <laughs> and, and so that sort of gave me the courage to do it because I, I was like, well... I don't know if I could sit in total silence for the whole time. Maybe we'll try that one time. We'll just see how it goes. Um, Cause, well, I feel like you're here. So I feel like I want to talk to you and enjoy that. Um, even though I'm totally having a conversation with myself. I realize that. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so then I, I started to consider like, hey, I could actually I could actually have this and it would be quite fun. And I I'm totally enjoying myself here. This is this is way better than knitting by myself. Um although it would be cool if you could chime in. Um but yeah, I get it you're just busy and you're knitting away so it's okay if you're quiet uh yeah that's really all i have to say on that topic It's weird to watch yourself knit on video. I wonder how inefficient that finger is that sticks up there all the time. When I first started writing a blog, I don't know if you've read my... It's kind of crazy because... Okay, so let's back the train up. Um, I started writing a blog a long time ago and... Um, I had all my photos on Flickr, 
and then I deleted my Flickr account or something happened. I don't know because I feel like I didn't delete it, but I feel like it's gone. And then um, all my photos are gone. And so then my like all the photos that I had because on a blog you can kind of like put the photo in there from Flickr and it'll like slurp it in. So I did that. But then when I I guess I closed my account, um, all my photos were gone off the blog. So it just looks stupid now because there's all these, I'm like, yeah, see, look what I did here. And then you can't see. Um, and I've tried to fill in some of them, but it's probably the most boring job I've ever done. Going backwards in posts that, I don't know, it seems irrelevant. So I kind of have done that, but sort of haven't. Um, and then now... What I was saying was um, that I I went through this phase when I kind of first started knitting of like, what is the most practical way to knit? Is it um, right-handed or left-handed? You know, like continental or British? I don't, what? I don't know. Um, or the other one, this way that I knit? And... And yeah, like I found the continental way like way harder for me to knit, probably because I learned this way. Um, I really admire the yarn harlot for her ability to throw and and like production knit, but I don't know if I'm quite motivated enough to learn how to do that as much as it would really speed the process up. I don't know. I just enjoy knitting. But I do notice my finger just poking up there. Yeah, I don't know. How do you knit? Um, I used to get really sore when I knit. Did you ever have that problem? Um, I would like, I'd like raise, I don't know, I'm like knitting like this. I don't know why, but it would really hurt. And it'll occasionally happen now if I'm trying to rush on a project to get it done or something. Um, but I try and knit with my elbows on a table so that I notice if I'm holding tension. Um, yeah, or with straights. I find straights make my wrists hurt, where circulars are, well, obviously, like, I'm just, it's just huge weight, so... It would be kind of crazy to just have that flailing around. Um, I have, I mean, I play the piano and did that for school. So I have a tendency to like raise up my shoulder and get tension there, which puts tension in my wrist and hurts. Um, but as long as I stay relaxed, I usually don't have pain. Do you have pain? So I was thinking that, um, oh, my screen went down. <laughs> um, I was thinking about um, the quiet parts of this video cast because, uh, I don't know, it's pretty quiet and then there's like traffic noise, I guess, I don't know. Um, but I'm just curious, do you think it would be fun to have music? And if you were to put music, what kind of music would you put? Um, and where would you get it? 
because I feel like there's got to be, I remember listening to a podcast a long time ago and they had royalty free music that they would put on there and then say who it was, like singing. Um, or like bird sounds, that would be cool. Like birds, rather than traffic. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's just fun for it to just be silent or my little voice just being like blah blah blah? It's kind of how it is at Knitting Circle. Actually, at my Knitting Circle, they they play like The Wave, I think, is the radio station, and it's a hilarious station. They play just random like, you know, Beyoncé and then 80s pop. It's yeah, it's good times. Um, but it's weird because I'm sitting there with, you know, women who are retired and then there's me and then they're playing Beyonce, you know, put a ring on it or whatever. It's, um, I don't know, it's funny. It's a funny music station. And sometimes I wonder what it would be like if it was just totally silent and then would it be weird? I don't know. Um, I'm the type of person who often won't even have anything going on around me, like no music, no nothing. Where my mom and my brother are totally, they love to have the music playing. And Jeff too, I think, would have music playing all the time, if I wasn't complaining. So I think I'm about four rows away from my shoulder shaping. And then I've decided, thanks to Mary at one of my knitting circles, that I'm going to knit the sleeves at the same time. Because, um, I don't really, you know, like starting over and doing the same thing again. And also I want them to be the same because the fronts of the sweater, not completely the same. Probably won't matter. But sleeves really do need to be the same length and it would be weird if one was like super skinny and then the other one was like, not that you will, it could happen, could. Sometimes I just, like with the back, I was a couple stitches off and um, as far as like the width and I just don't care. And I don't want that to happen with the sleeves so I'm going to knit them both at the same time. <sighs> I did that silently, so in case you're counting, but here you go. It's the first one, so here we go.
Is it not good that the top of my head is not in the picture? Maybe I'll fix it. It's actually better. I think I'm better composed like this. Two. Ah, sorry. Ah, I did not mean to say that out loud. So now I think all of my cables are going to cross at the same time. And then I do, I end with a wrong side row. So, bang, here we go. I am totally digging this pattern as far as how it looks. I'm stoked to see how it fits. A lot of people said that the sleeves were really tight. So I'm curious what that's going to be like. But I have super skinny arms, so it might be, it might just be fine. I wonder if this person has, she doesn't look like she has super skinny arms. Unless that's not her. know these days. So the past little while, let's get into some philosophical chit chat, shall we? Um, I've been thinking a lot about perfectionism because I I feel that I am a perfectionist. Um, I don't really I don't think it's good um, in the sense that it stresses me out in a major way. Um, so I've been, <clears throat> over the past few months, I've sort of taken a hiatus from um, what I was doing before because I needed some perspective. Um, and some of that perspective has led me to realize that um, my inner critic is a little bit out of hand. And I was laying in the bathtub last night just thinking about how how I'm just not, I'm not happy with anything, ever. Like, I always am looking at it, oh, stretch time, let's do this. Um, I'm always looking at it like, oh, that could be improved. Or, hmm, yeah, that's, uh, that's not how I would do it. And sometimes things, like, niggle away that have nothing to do with me. For example, there's this dude today, um, I was walking at Buttertubs, 
It's the funniest name, butter tubs. But it's a marsh with path around it. And I was walking, and there's no dogs allowed there because of ducks and um, poop, you know, that thing. And so this guy is walking, and he's got these two dogs. And I didn't really notice at first because I was just like, blah, blah, thinking whatever I was thinking in my head. And then he was like, he said something to me, maybe hi. And then... Then he started blabbing away about how he couldn't get his dogs, like, so there's like a big trail system sort of in that part of Nanaimo, and um, it goes through the Buttertubs Marsh. And he, I guess, was walking with his dogs, obviously, and um, was like thoroughly annoyed at having to walk through there with his dogs and break the rules or whatever um, but he had he felt that he had no choice but he was like kind of snippy about it and I was like I don't know that's strange like it, I just it was weird it was, I felt like he needed to vent and so then after that interaction I thought about it and I was like like this really doesn't matter this interaction. I could just, you know, totally forget that ever happened and it would be fine. But for some reason it was like repeating in my head, you know, when things like that happened. I don't know if it was because he had like a bit of energy about it or I was just like not pleased that he approached me with that kind of energy in that moment. I was just like all chill almost on my walk and then he was like, rah, rah. I don't know. So it was a very non-equanimous moment. Um, but anyway, I was I was caring a lot about it, I guess. And and I was just I was realizing that like like really who cares? And yet I care. And and that's like what the perfectionist feels like to me. Is it's this constant like, if things aren't perfect, then I'm going to think about it. Like, that's going to make it any better. And so, I don't know. And it, it was weird. I didn't even really have opinions about what he should have done differently. But I was thinking about what he should have done differently. I, I didn't come to any conclusions, but... It was, uh... It was a very enlightening moment. Mm -hmm. And so, I've just been kind of curious in the rest of my life, like... What am I caring about that really doesn't need to be cared about? Um, and obviously, that was one of those times. And it, yeah, so last night I'm laying in the bath, I'm thinking about how um, I think everything should be better. And trying to imagine what it would be like to just like, be okay with the way things were and I just couldn't I couldn't imagine it and I was getting kind of distraught about this I was like this isn't good how how am I ever gonna just accept people for who they are or accept myself for who I am or you know how things are if I can't if I can't just like chill out and stop judging everything I'm judging you right now no, me Sometimes I doing this in one take. It's totally a thing like that. I totally spit on my bed um, But it's it's like if I do this in one take There's gonna be things that I said that I feel were unnecessary or ways that I looked or you know I'm embarrassed that I kept dropping stitches or whatever um, So I figured doing it in one take I I'm, I'm letting go. I'm just like here's this, my weird hair day, and, um, I don't know, here, here's me, just do the way that I am, um, no script, no nothing, and that's, like, kind of, it's risky, you know, but it feels good, so, so, yeah, I figured that's, that's good, but I talked to Jeff about it, and Jeff's a wise guy, not a wise guy, but, like, a wise man, um, 
and not in the formal sense of the word. I mean, he does have a beard. No frankincense, though, or myrrh. Um, but I said to him, I was like, I just like feel really crappy that I can't be okay with the way things are. And he's like, can you be okay with not being okay with the way things are? And I was like, like I could kind of see it. And I realized he's a genius. Like that's that's totally true. Um, if I can be okay with the way that things, with if I can be okay with not being okay with the way that things are, then that's one thing, right? And then I can, I don't know, I imagine that it'll just spread. So yeah, I thought that was genius. I mean, like, probably multiple self-help books boiled down into one sentence. So, with this video, one take, I'm okay with things not being the way that I would want them to be. So there. Um, any other perfectionists out there in the world? Knitting's a thing, you know? Like, to leave that one stitch and not try and figure that out? That would have been a major problem in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm starting to get to the point where, like, who's really gonna care? I don't care. Really, that's the only thing that matters, but... I don't think anyone would notice, and plus, I probably need a little bit more room in the shoulders because I'm sloppy. Um, sometimes, not always. Yeah. Yeah, but I think knitting draws perfectionists. I've seen it at my knitting circles. Are you a perfectionist? Do you like unknit the entire thing because you made a boo boo at the beginning? Or do you somehow fudge it so that it doesn't matter? Oh dear. Speaking of fudging it. This is what happens when you talk and cable at the same time. Silly girl. Let's try that. Bam. Nope, but now there's only two. Oh my. Oh. I did wrong. Boop. 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 Okay. So, philosophically, another cool thing. I was talking to my bro on the phone yesterday. Oh, my screen went dark again. I wonder if that does something to the video. You'll have to tell me. Or maybe I'll watch it. I doubt it though, because then I will want to throw it in the garbage. Um, not true. Not true. I don't know. Anyway, I was talking to my bro on the phone, and uh, he was saying that he made an Excel sheet, and I was thinking, you know, with the cells and all the, like, the little sum symbol. Um, he was like, yeah, and I wrote down all the things that make me feel like I'm excelling. And I was like, oh, like what? And so he was saying, um, if he goes to the gym and if he is like freshly groomed and showered and if he's, he plays the guitar and sings um, as part of his like living. And so if he's like practiced and taken the time to write that day, oh, we've reached the shoulder one second. Okay. This 
is going to be a bit hairy. What else? Um, yeah, and so if he had, like, eaten well that day, um, if he'd stayed on top of um, his finances and was, like, responsible, you know, adulting, doing what he's supposed to do. And I was like, that's a great idea. Because his whole thing was that when he's not feeling his best, usually he's only doing like 40% of those things. And, you know, I've heard that. If you're feeling really bummed or whatever, it's a good idea to take a shower and like get dressed in your favorite clothes and put on some makeup or whatever. And, and I totally, I feel that way. Um, some people, I think, don't really... They're not affected by what they wear, but I'm totally the kind of person who, um, if I don't feel good about my clothes, I just feel weird all day. Um, so yeah, I was like, I'm going to make an Excel sheet of all the things that make me feel amazing. And then if I'm feeling crappy, I'll just start going through and doing those things. We'll see about motivation, but I'm, I'm generally pretty good with my motivations. So, yeah, I don't know. What, what makes you... I'll, that's a great idea. Okay, so in the comments, tell me what makes you feel like you're excelling. So, like, like my brother was saying, like, if he's all, like, freshly... Um, if he shaves his head and, like is all like fresh. That's something that makes him feel really good. Um, or goes to the gym or whatever. So what are your things that you do? Um, hmm? I think for me, I have to go outside. Like I have to be in nature or yeah. And then separate from that, but similar, I need to be social. Like today, I think my only interaction was with that weird guy. That's weird. Um, but other than that, I've been like at home or kind of by myself. I mean, I've seen people, but I haven't interacted with people. So that's a thing. Um, so yeah, I need, I need to go out and be in nature, but I also need to socialize with other human beings. Oh, and petting kitties. Yeah, and puppies. Those always make me feel so good. Yeah, so yeah, tell me. Tell me what you like to do. Um, what makes you feel all like happy and joyful. Okay, so I have to stop. And then wrap and turn. Yeah. And then do it again. Totally lifting my shoulder. You want to know something weird? Um, well, it's not weird. It's totally, I think, normal. Because this camera is taking a picture of me, but you're seeing, like, the mirror image. So, I think, because I was looking at the, um, the intro that I made, 
Yeah, totally, because it looks like I'm knitting with my left hand, which I'm not. I'm, this is my right. I wonder if I can turn that around. I'm going to try. We'll see. If it looks correct, that means that I fix it. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of weird. Especially if you're doing like videos for how to knit. That would be really confusing. Because that would be totally backwards. Whew. Okay, don't think about it too much. So, wrap and turn. Um, I got another question. Are you the sort of person who has... Wait, wait for it. Yeah. Um, multiple projects going at the same time. And why? Um, I have multiple projects because sometimes um, one of my projects isn't very portable, like this one. Not awesome if I'm somewhere where I want to knit discreetly, like in a meeting. Um, oh. No. What the? One, two. Oh. Yeah, see, this is why. Okay. This is going to be trickier than I expected. Because the cables are, like if I'm wrapping and turning, I'm not necessarily going to get to the place where I need to to make the cable go the other way. You know what I mean? Very interesting. I seem to remember this happening also on the front. Um, but yes, multiple projects on the go. And like, what kind of projects? I tend to have like one of each sort of thing maybe but it hasn't really worked out that way lately but I have I have a pair of socks on the go um, which I'm not sure that I like the color maybe I'll show you before we go and I have this sweater and I have another sweater as you've probably seen on the blog but I haven't knit on that for a while because I made so many mistakes and then fixed them all on the arms and now I'm just sort of like you need a timeout, so, um, but I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I want to finish this sweater so that I can wear it, because it's starting to get warm out, and I want to wear it before it gets too warm, but anyway, and then sometimes, um, I have, like, a toque or, yeah, something else, or, like, something more complicated, like lace, but I haven't knit anything, like, with lace in a while. Because I just haven't found any patterns that I like. Um, so yeah, there's that. And I got another question. Okay, are you the type of person who, on Ravelry, has a queue? You know, where you, um... 
you like line up your projects in order of like what you're gonna knit next. Do you do that? Because my ideas change so often um, about what I'm gonna knit that, and then there'll be like a project that just seems so right and then it'll go above everything. Does, do you do that and does it work? Like, are you, do you stick to it? Oh crap. I think I did something wrong. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, so maybe I'll back this train up to there. And then... Um, I'll show you my other sock, because we're almost out of time. I decided I'm going to go for an hour, because that always seems good. Um, it's generally how often I have to pee, and then it's not too long, but not too short, because an hour is a good amount of time to be sitting with a project. Are you the sort of person who will like count and then you'll get back to where you think it was and then you'll count again and like you just can't trust your counting? It's totally me. Okay, anyway. Um, so, my socks. Um, this is a Zober ball. You know those crazy colorful ones? Yeah. See, I was really excited because it looks really colorful and I'm stoked. And then I started knitting it, and so what I did is um, I'm knitting from both ends of the ball, and then I do this a lot. I'm, then I make stripes that are then variegated and eventually turn colors. So if you look at this, um, the first stripe is sort of blue and yellow, and then this is the other end of the ball, so it's um, bright blue and orange. And then this ball is here next, and or sorry, this end of the ball. So it kind of goes from like the orangey color to a light orange and a green. And then this blue and orange turn to green and red. And so see how that's happening? 
The only thing is, is like, it doesn't look very colorful. And I, I mean, I think it looks very autumn-y, I would say. It looks like an autumn sock. But I was staring at this beautiful bright blue color in contrast with this like yellow, oops, bright blue and then the yellow. And so I had this in my head that it was going to be this crazy looking sock with like, you know, Dobby the house elf sort of like, wow, crazy sock. No, it's not happening that way. So for a while I thought I would just not knit it, but I think that would be sad. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to knit it. And then I have the other half rolled into a ball and then I'm going to do it the same way. So it will be crazy looking. Um, I totally just looked out the window at a car going by because that's what I do. Um, yeah, it will be kind of crazy because they're not going to match and whatever, but I'm just a little disappointed about like I wanted them to be light and like, ah, so exciting. So there's that. Um, but yeah, so we've, we're kind of, um, it's like 58 minutes now, so so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna aim to do this again next week. Just see. Um, sometimes these things take a little while to like catch on to the ethers, get in your brain. Um, but if you see this and you really like it, like it, and then share it with someone, and then you could even have like you could have a knitting circle. Right? So it could be like four of you and then you could like watch me and then you can like take a picture and be like, hey, we're here, we're watching you and here's what we think and blah, whatever. That would be really cool because then you could answer questions that I ask and um, that would be fun. It would be, it's like, it's like a global knitting circle that you can watch at any time you want. You don't have to like be at knitting circle at 10 o'clock in the morning. You can, you could watch this at midnight. Well, I'm fully sleeping at that point, and it's good. You could be in Germany and watching it. Um, it would be tricky. I am going to put subtitles, uh, closed captioning, because um, I believe that I believe that everybody has the right to be able to understand things, and closed captioning gives that gives that ability to people who say can't hear or whatever. Um, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put like my little, and then, yeah, I don't, I think it's going to be good. I'd love to hear what you think and, um, I'd love to see like what you're working on. And if you want, you can friend me on Ravelry, Maven Knits, um, and hang out, talk to me there. That's fun. I, I love I love new friends, because sometimes it can be very lonely as a knitter. Um, yeah, so I'm stoked. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.